Hey everybody, this is Nemo and welcome to day 8 of the Presta Shop 101 series. Today we will talk about taxes and occurrences with a brief mention to payments as uh, we saw them already in day 6. So the first thing we want to do is to actually check if taxes are enabled within our shop. So I will go to localization, taxes, and you can see right away that we have two entries in the menu that mention the word tax. Taxes and tax rules. And of course, we will dive deeper into difference shortly, but for now, taxes. And first here we have a list of all the taxes we currently have installed in our Presta shop with the appropriate percentage mentioned in the name and we will see this is not strictly necessary although it's quite useful in another context and we will see why scrolling down we have tax options and here is where we can set if taxes should be globally enabled or disabled for our shop and i'll make sure that uh, they are enabled of course as they are because we need them for our video then to briefly mention the other options, the second one is useful if you want your customers to be aware of how much exactly they're spending because of taxes in the shopping cart area, and I will leave this disabled. Based on is actually quite important as it sets the source address that is used to calculate taxes. So by default, it is the delivery address but you might also want to apply taxes based on the billing address, which is supposedly the relocation of the customer who might as well be buying a gift, for instance, for someone. Lastly, use echo tax. Well, this is just a further tax uh, that you can add if you want your customers to pay something for any special echo compatible treatment or package or whatever it might be. Now, how do taxes work exactly? Well, first, let's create our own tax, and I will hit the Add New Tax button here at the, on the second navigation at the top, and then I will enter my tax name. I'll call this mean tax, super mean tax, and I will set an insane rate, since I'm really mean, so 100%, and I will make sure it's enabled, and I will save it. Now, if you remember from one of the previous lessons, I believe it was day three about products. In order for each product to have a price impact because of taxes, we must add taxes themselves to each of them. However, we cannot directly add a tax as, uh, one, as the one we just created. And here is where the difference between taxes and tax rules comes into place. Taxes are the general numerical value that represent the impact percentage on each product or whatever item, while tax rules are what enable us to bind a tax to something else, depending on certain conditions, of course. So if I want to add my new tax to something now, I have to create a new tax rule or modify an existing one, but we'll be creating a new tax rule. So again, it's pretty easy from the left-hand menu, tax rules. And once more, we are, of course, presented with a list of the installed tax rules. And uh, please notice this will vary depending on which country you chose when installing Presta Shop. I will add a new one from the top once more. We have to uh, give it a name and save it before we can do anything. So um, mean tax rule. Enable, save and stay. And as soon as the page refreshes, here are the options. First off, we can select, of course, a country. This rule will be valid for. And be aware that by selecting a specific country, not only people from other countries will not be charged the tax, which is what we want in that case, but because of what I believe it is a, as a press shop bug, we would not be able to see them in the text 
price of the product page in the back office as well. So if you do this because it's necessary, make sure you check the price in the front office as well. And no worries if you uh, if it doesn't make sense yet, I will mention it again as soon as we reach the product page. Uh, now, depending on the, on the country we select here, we will also have states. Let's see, United States, for example. And I will choose all states. Then, of course, zip postal, ra uh, postal code range is yet another um, restriction we can apply. Going down, we have behavior. And uh, here we can choose what to do if an address matches this stacks and others as well. We can choose to apply this one only as default, combine them, or apply one after the other and therefore charge it a lot in the end. Uh, but uh, ultimately, tax is what we are interested in. And uh, it's the percentage tax we just created a while ago that will be applied given these conditions. And of course, we want to choose super mean tax in this case. The description is, of course, optional, but um, you should fill it in in complex taxation environments such as, I don't know, Italy, maybe. Now, to demonstrate the specific country tax bug of the back office, I will leave United States selected as country, uh, behavior disk tax only, and tax super mean tax, and I will save and stay. Okay, so we created this tax rule. And I said we can only apply one tax rule per product. Actually, there is a bit of confusion around this. We created a tax rules group that is what is really assigned to the item and inside it, a tax rule. That is this United States one. But this way, people buying from another country say France, for example, uh, since we can assign one group per, say, product only, will not be taxed at all. What if we need to? Well, again, while viewing this groups page here, we can add a rule for another country, say, again, as I said, France. So, same procedure, add a new tax rule. And notice it doesn't say group. So country France, where is it? France, this tax only, and uh, we will add something else. So uh, Italian VAT 10%. Okay, save and stay. All right, now before continuing on, I noticed I didn't select a state, which is necessary to demonstrate the bug I mentioned before. So I will choose Alabama and save and stay. All right, so let's now apply it to a product. So catalog products, let's see, blouse maybe. Prices, and you can see it reads no tax in the tax rule setting. So I will choose mean tax rule and save and stay. Now, can you see what I, what I was mentioning before? The final retail price here is the very same of the non tax version of the price. And this is because we selected specific countries and eventually states in the US. So to check the real price, we need to see it in the front office necessarily. And it's a bit troublesome, so I hope the Presser Shop team will eventually come up with a helper for this. So in the front office, I have a US account and I will refresh. So you can see the price has been doubled. Will the French one work since we use the same tax row group but two tax rows with two different taxes? Let's see, update. In country, I will choose France and I hope everything else is okay, so I will save. And you can see the price is considerably lower and it's being applied that, was it 10% or something like that, tax I uh, applied to France. Super. Now, let's scroll down a bit and let's see the shipping options. Well, you can see, for example, this carrier seems like it's not being added any tax. And this is because it needs to be added separately for each carrier. Let's see how to. So, from the back office, 
shipping carriers. So here I have a list of my carriers as we saw in the previous lesson, if you recall. And I will choose, was it my carrier? Yes. So edit under locations and costs, you can see no tax. So let's add again our mean tax rule and finish. So back to the front office, refresh, you can see it's being applied 10% because we're using a French address and that is correct. Let's see once more if United States work and I will choose the state Alabama and save. So it should be $6 now. Scroll down, yep, $6. So great. And uh, this takes care of it. Uh, now, before closing the tax topic, I wanted to mention one thing. You might find yourself in the need of reassigning all tax rules or for some reason, or actually assign them for the first time. And it would be quite, uh, should, I should say, boring, but actually worse than that, to add them all one by one to each and every product, especially if you have a massive catalog. Well, if you do, have a look at my completely free module, Tax Roll Assigner, which you can download for free at store.nemops.com, and that will save you quite some trouble and time if that's the case. So, okay, let's now deal with currencies. If you sell beyond your country's borders, you will need to add support for different currencies at some point. And by default, the only one installed is the one of the country you chose when installing the software, once more. Let's head over to, first the back office, then localization, currencies. So once again, a table, surprising. Here are listed all currencies currently installed. And in my case, dollars only, so there is not much to get confused with. But um, generally, uh, if you have many, notice you can tell which one is the default because of the exchange rate value, which is generally one for, again, the default currency. And this very same parameter is vital when dealing with multiple currencies. So pay attention at the bottom link we have here, which is uh, actually the link to a PHP file you can run through a cron job to automatically update exchange rates every time you need it. And I recommend you do it at least once every day so that you don't lose any profit. Of course, it's possible to edit currencies, although I don't actually personally encourage uh, this because it's not really necessary. So uh, if you want to modify, say, uh, the currency number format, uh, well, you can do that by clicking Edit. And you can see here we have currency format, and we have plenty to choose from, the decimals, and the spacing, whether we want a space between, I think it's the, the symbol and the number itself. So if you want to edit this, uh, you can, but Please make sure you don't modify especially this numeric ISO code because this is vital for conversion rates. And uh, if you change this one to something you don't know, you will break conversion rates updates. So every um, price will become really weird when, when it's converted to the non-default currency. So I will save now. But hey, um, we were forgetting about something important. What if we need to add a new one? Should we really do it manually and take care of all those weird parameters and numbers? Well, yes and no. We can create one manually if we want. But uh, as you saw, in that case, it's a bit uh, cumbersome. So uh, luckily, PrestaShop comes in rescue with an automated importer and it can be accessed from localization, 
localization. It will be enough here. You can see import a localization pack. So to choose a country, I will choose France, for example. Uncheck everything but currencies and import. As easy as that. So if I go back to localization currencies, I should now add euros. Bingo. As easy as that. And as a really last mention on currencies, um, below that one we just saw, we can also change the default currency. And you can see now it says it says dollars. But beware that you will need to manually adjust every single price of your store after this. So if you want to do this, better to do it at the beginning when you don't have products yet. Last thing, really last thing before concluding this boring lesson, as somehow part of the monetary section of Presto Shop, we already saw how to deal with payment modules and how to start accepting payments in day six. It was modules payment to set them up and eventually modules modules to activate and install and whatever. Um, so if you uh, missed day six, please refer to that lesson in case you don't know how to do this. And okay. We are done with this really depressing topic. Thanks for watching everyone. I will see you in the next video.